Hey, it's Nick from Poison Balance Studio. Thank you for coming by to watch this video. I have a studio in central London, Notting Hill. I help people to move with natural ease and poise and balance and coordination and help them to distinguish harmful habits that are often the cause of neck pain, shoulder tension, back pain, and lots of other musculoskeletal issues. And those musculoskeletal issues are often a result of not using your body in accordance with its design. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a procedure that I use with lots of my clients and it helps build proprioception in the body, helps build awareness because that's one of the number one key skills is having an awareness of what you do and the way you do it. Then having a coordination plan, knowing that the head balance coordinates the rest of the movements. So this is pivotal and one of the most important uh, discoveries that Alexander made was this head, neck, and back relationship. So the head inherently is unstable, and it's five kilos that rest on top of the tip of the spine. And if you look around, you'll see, or you know, just notice some of your movements, the head is often going off balance, diminishing our poise, limiting the capacity of our breathing to function well, doesn't allow the organs to function as efficiently, places pressure on the joints, shortens and contracts the muscles. So when I'm, when I'm working with the ground and the gravity and the conscious mind, so I'm consciously aware of what the body's doing and how the body's moving, I'm gonna start moving much more efficiently because my thinking and my awareness will have an immediate influence on how I move. And what we need to develop is this sixth sense and Alexander, the, the developer of the Alexander Technique, said it was like a lost sixth sense. Our sense of how we move in space and time isn't that reliable. We're often guided by feelings, this feels right, and we don't have a clear understanding about how the body functions as an, as an integrated whole. So this, this procedure is called wall work, and I've got a colleague called Sue Laurie. She's just published a book called Touching Lives and she's taught in the National Theatre for 40 years and the Royal Shakespeare Company. And she's an incredible teacher and she works, she's worked with some of the great actors and many other people and she says, Nick, you've always got to do wall work with your clients. And she works with singers, performers, mainly actors, all sorts, uh, yeah, so many performers. And she notices and we notice as teachers that when people go to move, they're disturbing and upsetting the balance of the head in relation to the torso, in relation to the spine. And when we've got this dynamic head balance, and there's a really important joint here called the atlas occipital joint, when that joint and the head balance is rested on that joint and the spinal column is lengthening, that gives an expansive, that gives an expansion and space for all the organs to function well, the breathing to work more dynamically, so the breathing can sustain and support the voice if one is singing, if one is speaking, public speaking, acting, reciting, whatever activity you're doing, we want to bring in this expansiveness, this coordination of the head, neck and back. So what's going to help me build that build awareness in the back because the back is one of the biggest blind spots we can't really look around and see our back we don't really feel our back until we've got some sort of pain but largely we just ignore the back and the back and the spine it coordinates it's the central axis of the body everything else is arranged on top of the spine so the head sits on top this big thoracic region it's another big container sort of hangs around the thoracic region of the spine, the pelvis and the limbs sort of hang off the end of the spine. So we've got these three containers, the pelvis and of course the lower limbs and the upper limbs. So once we can create this alignment and this expansion and length through the torso, it helps to organize the rest of the coordination and functioning of the body. So leaning against the wall, maybe the feet about six inches away and you can just lean against the wall so you feel the impression you can feel that the wall is touching your back your back is touching the wall so there's like a sensory 
impression. We're building that proprioception, that sense register of where we are in space and time. So our movements become more accurate. And then I can take a deep breath into the back and more importantly, an out breath, because in order to fill the lungs, we need to empty the lungs. And when I empty the lungs, the diaphragm domes up and causes an, a big vacuum. And there, then there'd just be a natural desire to breathe in. And when I breathe in, the breath will expand my torso. And I call it three-dimensional breathing. Most people think that the breath is just the abdominal region here. And when we're breathing well, we're singing well, we're speaking well, that we're breathing from the diaphragm, these you know, the belly, belly breathing. What we want to do is expand the breathing in the back. That's really important because there's a huge reservoir of space. It's like an untapped reserve. And it's like big, it's a big resonating chamber. So we want to think of that breath expanding the whole torso and I'm just sliding up and down the wall and as I'm sliding down I'm just, I'm just going to take my feet a little bit further so I can really feel that I can release into the wall so the wall's giving me that the wall's giving me that reference point it's giving my spine that ability to expand and to lengthen I can feel the whole of my back and my ribs and those accessory breathing muscles, which are the intercostal muscles, the serratus muscles, this big core set of muscles here that's often referred to as the core muscles. They go right into the back. So I can feel that whole expansion of the torso. And the head, you don't want the head touching the wall, because if the head touches the wall, you'll be pulling the head back and down. And the pharynx, is a suspensory mechanism it's the windpipe and if there's tension in the neck you're going to limit your capacity to breathe and so often with musicians they feel there isn't enough purchase on the breath there isn't enough fuel and power to drive the voice to reach those high-end notes those low-end notes and if you're a performer it could be running breath is fuel it's the energy that we really need to uh, conserve and we need to know how to fuel the body and largely the back is asleep those muscles in the back are contracted there's no movement there's no springiness in the ribs they, the muscles aren't malleable and palpable they're very locked and tight because we tend to contract and compress the body so we're using the back we're using the wall rather to expand the back we're using the breath to almost direct the breath in through the nose and it swirls down through the throat, the throat is soft, comes down through the spine, the breath helps to awaken the spine, helps to expand the back, have those accessory breathing muscles into the, all around the back and the torso start to come alive. And we have a direction in the Alexander technique and it's called lengthening and widening. So we think of the neck muscles releasing, the head floating up on top of the tip of the spine and releasing up into space above me. And the rest of the torso lengthening, expanding, and the hips releasing, and the knees releasing forwards and away. So as I'm releasing down, I'm thinking up and the head floating up in space, and then I'm releasing back up again. So it's a very dynamic movement. I can feel all the hip flexors working, hinging in the hip joint, knees are opening, ankles are, ankles are releasing. So it's a very dynamic movement. So I'm just gonna tilt away from the wall, again from the hip, hip joint. So you can see when I'm tilting away, the whole neck, the whole spine, neck and head is working as an integrated whole and I'm back in that springy position, I can gently come back into the wall and slide up and down. So what I suggest you do is play with it, build that proprioception. Remember the breathing is three dimensional. We want the whole back to expand, the ribs to expand, the muscles to expand, and the spine to extend. And more importantly, the head to be 
poised and balanced and really alive on top of the tip of the spine. And then when you come away from the wall, I really have a lovely sense now that I'm much more in touch with my back. There's this sense of alignment and balance. I'm working with the ground, the gravity, and the body's own amazing natural ability to want to go up towards the light. So I hope this video has been useful. So press the subscribe button. I, I'm often sharing videos and I hope they make you, help you to move with much more grace and presence and ease. Thanks for watching.